fourth graders and welcome back to math class. We're continuing our study of measurement and we're continuing using our metric units. If you'll remember yesterday, we talked about metric units and how to measure length. Well, today we're gonna continue with metric units, but we're gonna talk about how to measure capacity. Let's think back to a week or two ago when we talked about how to measure capacity using customary units. Do you remember? I had some special guests come and tell us about how to measure capacity. And when we did that, we used cups, we used pints, we used quarts, and we used gallons. And if you'll remember, there were two pints in a quart, there were four quarts in a gallon, there were eight ounces in a cup. So there were lots of different things to remember. Well, the great thing about using metric units to talk about capacity is that it's much simpler. There's only two different units. And just like yesterday, when we were using metric to use length, all of these units end in zero when we're doing our conversions. So this makes life a whole lot easier when we're trying to talk about our conversions. Another word for capacity, and I want you to know this word because it's sometimes used in place of the word capacity, is volume. And remember, capacity or volume is the amount that something can hold. So let's start by talking about the smallest unit in metric units of capacity or volume, and that is called a milliliter. Remember, milla is usually very small. And let me show you this little dropper holds less, I mean, more than one milliliter. I had the hardest time finding something that was small enough to show you milliliter. Here is one of those little medicine cups, like what you would use if your mom's dipping you out some cough syrup. And if I get it really close to the camera, you can see it says 30 milliliters. So this little cup right here will hold 30 milliliters, our tiniest measure. So we would squish water or medicine or whatever 30 times into here to equal 30 milliliters. So a milliliter we can conclude is a very, very tiny unit of measure. Um, now, if we want to look at a liter, here is a liter right here. This holds one entire liter and it would hold 1,000 milliliters. So 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. Another example of an everyday item that would hold about a liter is about the size of just a normal water bottle. Now I've seen the size of some of your water bottles and they're gigantic and they hold more than just one liter. But this water bottle is an example of something that would hold about one liter or about a thousand milliliters. Now, if you'll think back to going to the grocery store and we buy those big bottles of Coke, and sometimes if you buy the biggest one, it's a three liter, which means it holds three of these three liters. You can also buy the smaller one, which is a two liter, or you could buy one that you might actually drink the whole thing, and that is one liter. So when we're talking in liters, there are some things that we actually do measure in the United States using liters and milliliters. Doctors often use milliliters whenever they're talking about units of measure for medicine, because it's a very small unit to use to say, he needs five milliliters of Tylenol. And they also will often call, um, refer to them as cc's and a cc is the same as a milliliter so we do in the united states use this metric system we just most often use the customary system which is cups pints quarts gallon those sorts of things so let's look at some examples together i'm going to share the screen here with my ipad and let's wait for it to come up and there it is. So let's look at our guided practice. If you have your math book at home, I'm so glad you do. If you'll turn with me to page 661, if you need just a second to get turned there, you can certainly pause the video while you get there with me. If you don't have your math book at home, please just write these along with me on a piece of paper or follow along. And then when you do your work, do it on a piece of paper. So let's look at number one on our guided practice together, just like we would in class. Um, the directions say in numbers one through four, choose which is the better estimate for capacity. So let's picture our things. Let's picture our water bottle for a liter. Let's picture our little dropper for a milliliter and let's think. 
this punch bowl here, would it hold five liters or would it hold 500 liters? Would it hold about five water bottles or 500 water bottles? What do you think? Say it out loud. You're right, it would hold five liters. It wouldn't hold 500 of these water bottles. That would be a whole lot of punch, wouldn't it? Okay, let's look at number two. Those big metal trash cans that you see, maybe at a park or somewhere, would it hold 10 of these water bottles, 10 liters, or 100 of these water bottles? Say it out loud. You're right, it would hold 100 of these water bottles or 100 liters. And now number three, this is a can of tomato sauce or tomato paste. So let's think, would it hold about 100 of these? And tomato sauce is kind of a smaller can. I should have thought to grab one out of my pantry, but it's a smaller can. It's not the bigger ones like the corn and green beans. So would it hold 100 of these or would it hold 10 of these? Think about it, 10 of these is a lot. So it would definitely be more like 100 milliliters for a small can of tomato paste. Now that last thing, it's kind of hard to see it there on my screen, but that's a test tube like what you would use in science. And they're about this big. Would it hold 10 of these, 10 milliliters, or would it hold one liter, one whole water bottle? I think you know that it would hold about 10 of these. It's a small little test tube, so it would hold about 10 milliliters. Let's look at number five, which unit of measure is greater. Which one's bigger, one liter or one milliliter? Well, come on, now we know that. Which one's bigger, the dropper or the water bottle? It's the water bottle. So the liter is a greater unit of measure. Which would be the better unit of measure to use to measure the amount of gasoline in a car's tank? Well, let's think if we sat there using this little dropper to measure the amount of gasoline, you're gonna be there for a long, long time. So what would we use? We would use a liter. And then why would milliliters be the better unit of measure to use for measuring the amount of water in a raindrop? Explain, what do you think? Why would we want to measure the amount of water in a raindrop in this instead of this? If you said because liters is too big, you're exactly right. We can't measure the amount of raindrop using such a big unit. So we would use milliliters. Uh, milliliters would be better because liters is too big. And speaking of being big, I know that my um, Expo marker here is a little bit fat to be writing on here. So bear with me as it takes up a little bit of space on our practice pages here. Now tonight for your homework, you're actually going to do some of the homework out of your book and you're going to do some homework on some of the documents that we've been using before, but it's all going to be in one place for you. So let's look at a few more um, examples down here at the bottom. Let's look at um, some of the independent practice. So choose what would be a more appropriate unit to measure the capacity, right, L or ML for liter or milliliter. Um, a bucket, if we have a bucket full of water, would we use liters or milliliters? If you said liters, you're exactly right. An ink pen, think about a little ink pen and how much it would hold inside there you would want to use milliliters to measure that. A juice glass. A juice glass is a really small glass, like those tiny little glasses they give you of juice, maybe if you're at um, a restaurant or something, they bring out a juice glass. You would not want to measure it in milliliter, I mean in liters, because this is too big. So you would use milliliters. And then a washing machine. We sure would not want to use this to fill up a washing machine, no way. So we would use liters to measure um, the amount that a washing machine will hold. Now, while I am still here on um, using my iPad, I'm going to set aside my guided practice and I wanna do um, some conversions with you using this, what we know here is that one liter equals 1,000 milliliters. So part of your homework tonight is going to be converting these things. If we know that one liter equals 1,000 milliliters, let me use a different color here so that that can be kind of our conversion key there. If it's asking us 
how many milliliters are in five liters, then we know that for every liter, there is 1,000 milliliters. So we say five times 1,000. And do you remember how to do that? Let's write it out here just for a reminder. To do five times 1,000, we do five times one is five. And then how many zeros do we add to the end? Three zeros. So five liters would equal 5,000 milliliters. Same thing for a bigger number like 25 liters equals how many milliliters? The same rule will apply. We say 25 times 1,000 in each one. So 25 times 1,000, 25 times one is 25. And then how many zeros are three zeros? So it would be 25,000 milliliters and 25 liters. Again, the math on the metric units is so much simpler because we're using multiples of 10. Now I'm going to erase those examples and I'm gonna do a couple more. And let's say they wanna know how many liters are in 7,000 milliliters. Well, what do we do? We know that there's 1,000 milliliters in every liter. So we take 7,000 and we divide it by 1,000. And we know if we're dividing by 1,000, we can whack off three of those, and we know that seven liters equals 7,000 milliliters. Now, let me give you one that's a little more challenging. Let me give you 90,000 milliliters equals how many liters? Well, we know to divide 90,000 by 1,000, there's one, two, three zeros, so we can whack off three zeros, and what are we left with? That 90, now it has an extra zero in there, but it stays with the nine, and it's 90 liters equals 90,000 milliliters. So again, that um, conversion there is a little bit easier with the metric units because we are all dealing with multiples of 10. So hopefully we're jumping back here to our main camera. There we are back in the classroom here. And um, let's review quickly milliliter, liter, thinking through which one would we use to measure which thing. So tonight for your homework, it's all going to be located in one place. I have the snipping, um, the snipped picture of part of your homework and in it there are text boxes. And so use what we know about showing your work on your homework at home in your book and then going in there and typing your answers into the PowerPoint document. And remember, if you accidentally delete a text box, use that undo button, or you can always draw your own text box as well. So um, great job today on capacity or volume using the metric units. We look forward to seeing you at our Zoom later where you can ask any questions that you may have. Never forget,